Hey guys, today I'm going to talk to you about one of the most popular algorithms on LeetCode Tucson. It's actually algorithm number one, and there are literally thousands of people trying this algorithm every day on LeetCode. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite algorithms, and over the years, I've gone through lots of different technical interviews for freelance jobs, my full-time job, um, different contracting opportunities. And I rarely see the same algorithm pop up in more than one interview, but I've seen variations of this, this one pop up a lot. And today I'm gonna show you how to do it the classic way in Python, the way that most of the time you'll pass the interview if you answer it this way. Um, I'm also gonna show you how to do it in Golang since increasingly a lot of recruiters keep asking me about Golang, so um, not actually that difficult of a language to learn. And uh, anyway, let's jump into the problem. So you're given a list called nums, and in this list there is a, a target that we want to reach. So we have to return the indices of the two numbers that are in the list nums, which add up to target. In example one, nums is this list, 2, 7, 11, 15, and the target is 9. So obviously 2 plus 7 equals 9. So the output is 0, 1 because 2 is in index 0 and 7 is in index 1. And then example 2 is the same thing. Uh, 3, 2, 4, target is 6. Uh, 3 plus 2 equals 5, so that's not it. 3 plus 4 is 7, so that's not it. 2 plus 4 is 6. So the indices are 1, 2. Um, which correspond to uh, values 2 and 4. All right, so let's jump into my Python solution. Now, I'll be honest, this isn't the fastest solution. Um, some people have come up with faster solutions, but the problem is in these interviews, as I've mentioned before, it's not necessarily good to know too much. You don't want to have a bad solution, generally speaking. Sometimes you'll have an interviewer who who isn't very good with algorithms at all and um, their solution is, is just terrible, but there's nothing that you can do about it. I would say nine out of 10 times that this solution will work for the Tucson problem. Um, and basically the way you do it is you, you create a hash set and then you iterate through the list, keeping track of the difference between the value that you're at currently, which is nums i and the target and you see whether it's already in the hash set. If it's in the, already in the hash set, then you're done because you already have the index of the previous one, which is um, hash set target minus nums i, and the one that you're at currently, which is i. So that's the solution. Otherwise, you just add uh, the value that you're at currently um, in the hash set, and the, uh, so it's like hash set value, which is nums i, equals i, which is the index. Um, so that's a pretty fast solution. All right, 59 microseconds, not terrible. All right, and it actually beats 85%, which is crazy. Um, all righty, so let's go to the Golang version. All right, so actually, if you already are a programmer in Python and JavaScript or C++, this doesn't really look that bad. Um, in Python, we said definition two sums. In Golang, we say func two sums. And then we got these squiggly brackets like you do in JavaScript or other programming languages. Um, in Python, we said hash set equals, and then we just had the squiggly braces uh, denoting that it was going to be a dictionary here. Uh, it's just colon equals, and then we have a function called make and a map, and we're saying we're mapping the int to another int. In this case, the int is the value in nums, and the other int is the index. So, um, like in Python, before I had said hash set value equals i. And uh, going down, it's like for i, uh, starting at zero through length nums, I++, which is the same as it is in JavaScript. Uh, if value OK is in this hash set, then we return I val, which is like the set being mapped to this list. So that's going to give us the indices that we need. Otherwise, we, uh, we add it 
to the hash set. And it turns out that you add it exactly the same way that you would in Python. And then this return statement actually isn't, um, isn't necessary. So let's go ahead and submit it and see how much faster it is than Python. All right. <laughs> so in Golang, the exact same solution actually ran this time in zero microseconds. Um, it says it beats 100%, but I think that's really just because, well, first of all, it's running in zero microseconds. But second of all, just because there aren't too many Golang or Go programmers on LeetCode. I'll say this. Increasingly, interviewers are reaching out to me all the time. Uh, asking about Golang. I found that every team I've ever worked on has always said that, you know, we do Golang. Nobody actually does Golang, but as you can see from this problem, it's not terribly difficult to learn. It's just kind of like a, a cross between Klingon and, and JavaScript. Um, anyway, thank you so much for your time and uh, look forward to hearing from you guys again soon.